start program C, we're back to the accommodating resistance, back to using the bands and we're going to use them on the trap bar. So we've got this really nice platform attachment uh, where you can actually set the bands up. So if you don't want to do it in a cage, you can actually just do it on the platform. So this is going to be a conventional uh, trap bar speed pull. And the instruction I'm going to give Leanne is she's going to try and snap the bands. What does that mean? It means I told her to express force quickly. So rather than this being kind of a maximal lift where she's just trying to grind out an 85, 90% poundage, we're going to work at about 60% one RM plus the bands. Again, what do the bands do? They reverse the strength curve. So this is actually harder at lockout. And what you typically find is people say, I really felt my quads on those trap bar pulls. That's kind of how it should work. So Leanne's going to get into a typical trap bar position, going to get her glutes as low as they can. And then the instruction is going to be, she's going to kind of put about 99% force in, and then she's going to explode and stand up. Good, perfect. Put it back down. Same again, reset. Good. And again, one more. Good. Put it back down. Leanne's then going to rest for maybe 75 to 90 seconds. Similar to um, the banded speed bench. What you'll find with this is you'll get some potentiation, remember post-activation potentiation, what does that mean? It means that you kind of get a bit of an altered state where the nervous system starts to really switch on. So probably after about four or five sets, she'll be at a peak power production. Probably by eight sets, fatigue will have set in and that will start to come back down. So it's natural to find that after about two or three sets, you just feel a little bit more explosive. And that's why performing banded work at the start of workouts can sometimes be of benefit to the rest of what you do. Typically, if I have someone do, say, um, a banded trap bar pull, a banded bench, when they get into their dumbbell work that follows, they say, well, I just felt a little bit stronger. That is sometimes a little bit of potentiation that just kicks in and just means that the type two fibers are a little bit more alert and, and work a little bit better. Let's go do it again. Now, the other thing to point out is reset on each rep. So don't bounce it, okay? We're, we're not performing like, you know, um, AMRAPs and stuff. We're looking for quality reps. Good. You have to, if you look at Leanne's pelvis, she's got to make sure she puts the pelvis through and relax. So why do we only do threes? We do threes because if she was to do sets of five or six, you would find that fatigue became a limiting factor on her force production. When you ask people to run sprints, for example, at maximal effort, typically what they call speed work is actually operational speed work. What does that mean? When you run, say, a 40 to 60 meter sprint, you need full recovery, which probably occurs somewhere between seven and 10 minutes. If you perform the full rest period, typically you find they get faster on their second, third, fourth, fifth sprints. If they perform the sprint with shorter recoveries, then they never really get any quicker. Now it actually becomes operational speed. Okay, same again. So get into the hole and then express the force. Good. Right, snap the bands. Let's see two aggressive reps. There you go. And again, one more. Perfect. And relax. Trap bar speed pulls. So we're on to a half kneeling jammer press. Okay, so Leanne's gonna kneel down on the same knee as the arm she's using to press. She then takes the landmine, takes it into underhand position. Now, one of the challenges here is you'll feel you wanna twist as you press. So you really wanna try and stay square with your shoulders and your waist. When you do your jammer presses, you'll find your, your core and your abs are blown the days after. So from there, she's gonna express the force, punch to the top, control it on the way down, and then punch again. Good, two, good. Perfect, three. Let's get to six. Four, good. Keep your waist tight, shoulders square. Five, good. Give me one more, give me one more. Six, good. And relax. Half kneeling, jammer press. Okay, so we're back to the bamboo bar to get some volume um, with the chest work. So remember, when you're loading the bamboo bar, either load it from the floor or load it with your training partner. The bar only weighs eight kilograms. So if you load anything substantial on one side, it will just flip and knock somebody out. So we don't want that. How does the bamboo or the earthquake bar work? Well, it vibrates, okay? Why do I like it? A, because it will give you some variety. It's probably something you've never used. And for those people that have been training for a long time, variety becomes difficult to find. And when you find like a new machine or new exercise, it provides a great stimulus for strength and hypertrophy gains. The second thing about this is that for anyone that's had any type of shoulder injuries, um, this is a great rehab tool. You'll really find that the recruitment of the triceps uh, really amplifies when you use the earthquake bar. You, you can grip this at whatever width you want. I always say to people, maybe stay slightly more narrow so the elbows just kind of graze past the body rather than maybe your traditional width that you do on a bench press. So Leanne's gonna set up as normal. I'm gonna give her a lift off and see if we can drop this on her throat. One, two, three. Okay, so from there, 
So it might look easy until you come to try it, but you can see already the bar is shaking and wobbling all over. What actually happens is that this challenges uh, the type two fibers a lot more than say a standard barbell. You'll find you get much higher motor unit recruitment. Now there's not a lot of research on that. And we're gonna talk about occlusion in a minute, which there is a lot of research on. But when you come to try this, you'll get phenomenal DOMS the day after, the first few times you use it, keep going. And we're gonna work in that typical kind of eight to 12 volume range, keep going. They're not bad to be fair. Not bad at all, keep going. Good, get me two more. How's it feel? Tough. Tough. One more. And relax. And remember, don't ever strip one side at a time or it's going to flip. So we're onto a lean away pull down and we've added a red band, which is just going to reverse the strength curve. The hand's going to perform an isometric. So what's going to happen is by using the band, it's going to be toughest at the bottom. So she'll get a really good pump. And again, this is a little bit of variety. So people have normally done typical pull downs month after month, year after year, and the body just becomes used to it. Once you add a band, something very, very simple, it just completely changes the exercise and you should get a really good feel and pump. With a lean away pull, rather than being completely vertical, you're actually gonna lean away. That's perfect. And then the key thing with the lean away is to make sure you kind of retract the shoulders a little bit so that we don't end up in that kind of humeral slide position where you're not really doing too many good things to the shoulder. So from there, Leanne pulls down. She's gonna hold it isometric against her chest. Now this works best with this mag grip because the mag grip is angled so you can really get into the best position. Come all the way to the top. Good, and again, pull down. Good, hold isometric. In that isometric position, remember to try and create tension. So you're really forcibly trying to pull down. And again, good, and pull down. Perfect. So remember the band reverses the strength curve. It makes it much harder in that bottom position. Let's just do one more. If you've been doing pull downs for a long time, I'd really advocate attach the band, get one of the guys to show you how to do it safely, and it will feel like a completely different exercise. Cool. Okay, you start and I'll explain. So occlusion, blood flow restriction, fact or fiction? Fact, very much so, fact. So applying these bands um, and restricting blood flow is actually proven to stimulate hypertrophy and strength gains. How does that work? Because it just looks like the sort of thing you might see in Men's Health magazine that's complete bullshit. It's not actually true. So blood flow restriction training actually comes from katsu torture treatment by the Japanese years and years ago. That's where kind of the theory came from. And what it allows us to do is to work at very low percentages. So the science tells us that we work at about 30% one RM performing high rep ranges. So Leanne's targeting 30 reps on this first set. And what will happen is we'll be able to access and recruit the type two fibers that normally require very, very high intensities. So loading's at about 85% one RM. Now, one of the downsides of doing that very, very heavy loading is it's very, it's very um, damaging on the nervous system and doing too much of that type of work can actually lead to too much fatigue. One of the other benefits with occlusion training is if someone has an injury, like very typically this is used with ACLs, so when a footballer will tear his ACL and he has to wait for a period to have the operation for the swelling to go down, they'll actually have him perform. So you're gonna rest 30 seconds only, all right? Your arms have gone orange, the biceps are orange. So Leanne targets 30 reps on her first set. Don't worry if you don't get 30, you just get a failure. Your rest period is mega short, should be about 30 seconds only, okay? Then she goes again. Now you tell people to try and get to 20. No one ever really does. They normally get to about 12 or 13. Come on, you want guns, don't you? So it's a standard cable curl. I would advise you, you know, choose the exercise where you get the best pump on your biceps. So if that's incline curls, do incline curls. If that's lion curls, do lion curls. Kaiser curls, do Kaiser curls. But you're only gonna work three sets. You, you don't need too much more with occlusion. Put that down, 30 seconds rest, and then we'll go again. You also shouldn't leave the bands on too long. So some research, research shows that if they're on for more than about 15 minutes, that might do a little bit of damage to you. So typically what we're gonna do is perform the biceps, take the bands off, give it a bit of a break, put them back on and perform the triceps. Let's go again. Right, rep them out, come on. You're gonna get some doms off this tomorrow. So if you see people walking around the gym and they've got their arms strapped or perhaps their legs strapped and you think what on earth are they doing? There is actually a very strong scientific rationale for that. What does it work best for? It works best, in my opinion, for... <laughs> could just leave them on. 
It works best, in my opinion, for the smaller muscle groups that you can really easily target. It works phenomenally well for biceps and triceps, works very, very well for quads, if you include here at the hip, and it works very, very well for calves. I'm gonna pop a couple of links uh, into, the, into this post so that you can actually read for yourself, but I'm a big proponent of occlusion training. The one thing I would say is don't overdo it. So, although that's only three sets and might take six to seven minutes, that's a lot of work because you've directly targeted those type two fibers, those type two wipe fibers that have the biggest potential for growth, but they also need slightly longer recovery times. So if you're doing this every day, you're never gonna follow that pattern of giving the body enough time to kind of repair and grow, occlusion. Okay, so occlusion. So Leanne has done the bicep occlusion work. We've given her a break for about three to four minutes. We've put the wraps back on, and now it's exactly the same um, approach. So the best occlusion work, the best results are typically seen from performing 30% one RM for a target of 30 reps on your first set, followed by a rest period of 30 to 45 seconds, and then you go to failure again, and then go to failure again. So it's unlikely that you're gonna get 30, 30, 30, just purely because you'll have such extreme pain um, from kind of all the waste products that start to accumulate. But that should be the target. So remember, why does occlusion work? Why does it actually produce the type of strength hypertrophy gains that you want? Because restricting the blood flow and letting the waste products get out mean that the type two fibers are recruited even at low, low load. So 30 seconds. There's something called Henneman's recruitment order, okay? So when we're performing, say, an exercise at 60 to 70%, that typical hypertrophy range, the way that the body treats that is it will recruit the lowest threshold units first, which we don't really want to happen. That's why we always need to be lifting in our 85%-ish range. When we work primarily at 60 to 70%, we're gonna tend to only work those kind of type one fibers that don't have the best potential for strength and hypertrophy gains. Yes, we might get some sarcoplasmic hypertrophy, but the real uh, gold is done in that kind of 85% one RM for that five to six type uh, rep range. That's where the type two fibers really get activated the most, okay? Keep going, keep going. So she's getting nice and red and orange again. She'll be getting a really good pump. If you've never done occlusion, the first time you do it, the pump is absolutely insane. How tight should the bands be? Well, in the research, in the literature, they actually use medical cuffs. And what they do is they inflate the cuff and they have these cuffs that are designed to stay at the same tension. So as your arm starts to expand throughout the sets, the cuff actually starts to just let a bit of air out. You can buy those now online as well. But for most people, just using some kind of bandages or types of wraps will work really well. You have to play around a bit. If you go so tight you can't feel your fingers after 20 seconds, that's a bit much. And if you get through the exercise and don't really have a significant pump, that wasn't tight enough. It just takes a little bit of time to play around with. Come on then, finish them up. Think about your triceps. You'll have bigger arms than Evans, come on. Think about your triceps. Actually, Evans does love a bit of occlusion, shout out. Finish them off and relax. So occlusion, occlusion, fact or fiction? Fact, if it comes from me, it's definitely not fiction. This ain't men's health, okay? I would definitely recommend that you try occlusion. I think uh, if you perform it on your arms at the end of the workout, you will get a phenomenal pump. And if it's the first time you've done it, you should get some really good hypertrophy gains.